Good morning, everyone. Uh, I thank everyone of you uh, for taking some time out and being here uh, to listen to uh, the drug serialization implementation journey of our beloved client, L.A. Lilly and Company. Uh, without taking much time, I would like to invite Mr. Jeff West, who is Enterprise Serialization's Implementation Track Leader of Global Serialization Program at L.A. Lilly. Over to you, Jeff. Thank you. As Barbara mentioned, my name is Jeff West. I've uh, been running our IT side of the SAP implementation around our serialization solution for about six and a half years. Just a little about Eli Lilly. Um, we're a, a pharmaceutical company, about 135 years old. Uh, we work in the biomedicines, oncology, diabetes, animal health arenas. Um, you've probably heard some of our products, Prozac, Cymbalta, Cialis, we're the bathtub guys, you know. Um, and our, we looked at our solution holistically through all our entire supply chain. So we're going to touch on a little piece of just about everything we do. Um, the biggest issues facing uh, the pharmaceutical companies around serialization have to do more so with uh, patient safety, uh, counterfeits. Um, the majority of this legislation, early legislation, was around uh, reimbursement frauds. Um, some of the counterfeiters got so good they weren't even making medicine. They were making end tabs off of boxes so they could do reimbursements. Um, so serialization is, in general, a way to protect our supply chain against diversions, against counterfeiting, uh, against fraud in general. When we set out um, with our solution, we wanted to try to find a way to uniquely identify every one of our products. There's lots of different technologies around there to do that. Um, we use a 2D data matrix barcode. Um, to allow us to not only identify the product, but then also track it through our supply chain. A little bit about serialization, just for those who don't know. Um, serialization is really about unique identification. It's about understanding your product, being able to mark your product in a way that you then can identify your product later, that your business partners can identify your product later, that your, your patients can identify your product later. The biggest problem with serialization is I put the product in a box. So while we spend a lot of time thinking about how we're going to get the little number on the actual product, um, as soon as I package it, I put it in a box. So not only do I have to know what I have, but I have to know where it is. Um, so I have to know what's in the box. I have to be able to uniquely identify that box when I see it again. When I put it on a pallet, I have, can't read the, the label, so I have to identify the pallet and know where that pallet is and be able to track that pallet. So this quickly becomes not a packaging problem. It becomes a warehouse problem. It becomes a distribution problem. It becomes a contract manufacturing problem. It becomes a third party logistics problem. In all, it becomes an enterprise problem. So when we looked at our solution, we tried to uh, develop our solution top down. And we really looked at the data that we were going to be collecting. We really looked at our infrastructure and tried to figure out the best way to manage the data before we started putting product on our data on the product. Uh, okay. When we started our serialization journey, we were focused on U.S., China, Turkey, but very quickly, serialization spread across the world. This is a slightly different build than, okay, so is it all of them? South Korea? Okay, there's a lot there. So now Lilly is looking at serialization in over a dozen countries and the European Union. Um, it is very different regulations across the world. A lot of standardization, but a, not, a, but a lot of not standardization. Our biggest challenge has been China. China ignored everyone else and built their own standard. Brazil is doing something very similar. So we have to build a solution that's flexible. We had to build a solution that, again, looked at the data and allowed us to be flexible about how we manage our data, how we collect our data, so that we could standardize everything else. So the biggest, um, keep looking up there. So the biggest drivers, the biggest challenges we had was um, Lilly, like all pharmaceutical companies, have patent expertise and things that drive them to reduce costs. In an environment we were in trying to reduce costs, the last thing we wanted to do was build a monolithic program around serialization. So we had to go slow. We had to be flexible. We had to minimize the impact of new systems on our existing infrastructure. We had to work, worry with and deal with all the various requirements and legislations, um, being able to follow GS1 standards, being able to do what China's doing, being able to do what Brazil's about to do. 
without having to change our solution. So we had to make it flexible both at our enterprise level and at our packaging line. Um, uh, we had um, various changing deadlines. The regulations not only were changing, but manufacturing was putting a lot of pressure on us to delay as much as possible. The last thing that they wanted to do was put a quality system in, um, a regulatory system in. There's, to them, no business benefit. So we were challenged with not only motivating them to do this early, but also helping them understand, you know, this, we're talking about loss of sales here. If I don't, we don't do this, we're not selling product, and motivate them appropriately. You know, the biggest challenge for us was we have um, a single SAP global instance at Lilly. Um, and, and to be able to basically distribute this solution across the world, but then bring all the data back into one place, had its challenges. Um, so we partnered with TCS with regard to our design and our development testing of this solution because we needed to be, have a way to build this um, at the pace we needed to go, at the resources level that we needed to utilize. They could upsize and downsize as we needed them to. If we had to pause, we could pause, um, which we have done several times. But it allowed us the flexibility that we needed to build the solution that we needed. And as we reach 2014 and we're deploying, deploying 18 packaging lines over the next 18 months, and we're glad that we went slow. We're glad that we have the infrastructure. We're glad we took the pace that we did. So to introduce Bargava, Bargava's going to talk about our um, technical solution, the actual implementation of the enterprise solution that integrates with our warehouses, integrates with our distribution centers, integrates with our packaging lines, integrates with our contract manufacturers. Again, because we wanted a single solution. When we started, we wanted to provide Lilly a global solution, but a standard solution. So we have, we use SAP at our core. We have standard interfaces to all of our different warehouse solutions. We have a single packaging solution that we deploy on all of our packaging lines. Standard, standard, standard is the way we approach this. So we wanted common solutions. We wanted an enterprise-wide data source, a single source of all our data. Regardless of where I make the data, regardless of whether a contract manufacturer makes the data, it all comes back to us in a single um, repository, SAP OER. We leverage our supply chain partners. We're working on solutions with um, third-party third logistics providers, um, external warehouses, our own internal distribution channels um, to ensure that our solution, that we can manage the data across our entire enterprise. Barbara's going to talk a little bit about our solution. Thank you, Jeff. So, uh, to meet the program objectives of LA Lilly and also the project objectives, so here is how we have architected the entire serialization solution. So I'll talk a little bit on this architecture. And uh, at every decision that we took on architecting the serialization solution, we took a conscious approach on aligning it with IS-95 architecture, manufacturing IS-95 architecture, so that all the solutions at all levels of IT architecture are loosely coupled so that we have a modular approach and we run the systems at every level, like at the line level, at the site level, and at the enterprise level without disrupting the business process if there are any latencies. And so at a local site level, so you see site managers, which are serialization execution systems, uh, which uses Systex software, uh, that manages the packaging lines, uh, which uh, perform automated packaging. That is where actual serial numbers are imprinted on the physical packaging layer. And uh, that is fed back to AI instances. We have three regional AI instances across the globe to manage serialization operations of around 55 packaging lines of LLE, and then that gets fed back to the enterprise layer, uh, OER, and where it stores all events of serial numbers across the enterprise. And there is complete integration with ECC, with OER, with AI, to perform the logistics business operations. As Jeff was talking about, Lilly serialization program is pretty comprehensive. It doesn't focus just on the packaging line integration, but it focuses on all the business functions of internal supply chain and also external supply chain, 
if we have to achieve an enterprise level solution, then there should be tight integration with the logistic solutions that we have at the enterprise level. And this is our system landscape. We have single global instance uh, with SAP ECC and many of the internal warehouses are run by SAP WM. And uh, we have various warehouse execution systems ranging from local execution systems to some of the matured uh, execution systems. And then uh, we have linear and 2D barcode printers and scanners uh, depending on the serialization regulations, what kind of data carriers that have to be used. So we have all sorts of uh, diverse uh, landscape, though we have standard products at each layer. And TCS has been the implementation partner to define, design, develop, test, and deploy the serialization solution. So we started the journey way back in early 2009. So it has been a five-year journey to reach the level that we are today with respect to the program. Okay. So how solution meets challenges. When Jeff was talking about some of the program objectives, some of the project objectives, and some of the business drivers for this program, those kind of, to meet those kind of objectives, there are a lot of constraints in which we have to build the solution. One, because regulations, though they are similar, everyone talks about serialization, everyone talks about product identification, but the way you have to realize or implement that regulation is quite different. So there are implementation challenges, implementation differences, so we have to take into account of those differences and also accept the fact that these regulations are going to change and accept the fact that there are many more regulations that will go into effect, right? So how can we make the, make the solution modular? How can we make the solution flexible enough to accept these kind of constraints? So let, us, let me talk about some of the, uh, some of the, uh, decisions or architecting decisions that we have taken in the course, so which help to meet those challenges. Uh, right? Okay. So the solution leverages the global SAP landscape. So there are very minimal changes that we have done on the existing SAP landscape. That means the inventory management operations, warehouse management operations, the manufacturing operations, very minimal changes. And whatever customization, whatever implementation that we have done, so we leveraged existing design, and it is completely aligned with the existing design. So that what, what does that mean to business? When they have to deploy the enterprise level solution, that they have to do a minimal amount of training, minimal amount of changes at the local site level to accept those enterprise level changes. And the solution is scalable to address um, new serialization regulations. There are two kinds of scalability uh, when we talk about uh, the serialization enterprise solution. One is vertical scalability, like you can add functionality on top of the existing functionality without disrupting the existing functionality. We try to make it modular and we can also change some of the functionality without changing the whole design. That's how the entire, entire solution has been built. And we can take a phased implementation approach, accepting the fact that it requires a coherent uh, coordination between the packaging lines, manufacturing sites, uh, uh, warehouse sites, and uh, affiliate operations. So there is a lot of coordination that has to happen to implement and deploy the solution. So there could be a scenario where we go live with the packaging line integration, but we do not go live with the warehouse integration solution. So the solution allows you to have a phased go lives of the, of the solution uh, so that the business is less disrupted. And more important thing, I would say this is the core of the entire serialization solution, serial number object ID design. Though everyone talks about identification of the product, capturing that information, tracking it across the supply chain, but the very basic identifiers are very different for each law. Not every country is mandating for GS1-based uh, serialization identifiers. Countries like China, countries like Brazil, and we could see more countries in future which have different non-standard, non-industry standard identifiers. So how is my solution capable of 
treating all the identifiers in a consistent manner so that I need not go back to the core of the solution and change it whenever I have to deal with new identifiers. So we have a comprehensive object ID design that allows us uh, to, to tackle that kind of challenge and at all levels of the enterprise architecture, not only at the packaging layer, but also at the enterprise layer, but also at the B2B exchange layer. And uh, another key uh, aspect of the solution that LLLE has many distribution centers which are owned and managed by LLLE itself, okay? So when you have that, and when you have distribution centers which manages the stock, which are serialized, and also non-serialized, and even in the serialized stocks, so you have, you have stocks for country X, country Y, country Z. So the identifiers are different, so the way serial number hierarchies are built are different, so how can you seamlessly manage the warehouse operations even without the operator thinking about what is serialized product and what is not serialized product. So that's one of the challenges that we took and every decision that we took uh, architecting the solution takes this aspect into account. And uh, as we talked, how can we ensure minimal disruption to the business when you are adopting that solution? Because the program outlay itself, a eight year or 10 year kind of program, and it requires four to five years to deploy the solution uh, across uh, all the warehouse centers. Right. And these are some of the business benefits. And this is not limited list. There are many more business benefits that we strongly believe serialization can bring in. But at this point of time, these are some of the business benefits which are very obvious the enterprise, comprehensive enterprise solution like which LA Lilly has, uh, would be able to realize. Uh, the key thing is patient safety and compliance. It's very straightforward because the, uh, the very crux of serialization solutions, track and trace solution is for patient safety and uh, it will reduce counterfeit products and it will bring enterprise uh, wide visibility of serial numbers at one single place so that you can, you can use the data for much more than just meeting the compliance. You can reduce um, the reimbursement frauds, you can build uh, good reverse logistics, you can, uh, you can enable partial product recall. So, so much can be done with that particular data. And then IT deployments and operations. Because of the approach that I really took to build a comprehensive global solution first and then deploy it across the sites as its long-term strategy. Of course, there could be some short-term measures to meet immediate regular requirements, but the approach is for having a long-term strategy. Because of that, there could be, uh, uh, there are a lot of benefits because of the consistent design, uh, lower cost of operations, and also better maintainability and support, and uh, the speed at which you can deploy the solution is much faster. And then financials, so we talked about uh, reimbursement frauds and facilitation of product recalls, improved warehouse operations because it's single instance and you have built the solution to seamlessly manage the serialized and non-serialized inventory. So it brings a lot of uh, uh, operational efficiency there. Okay, these are some of the accolades. What I wanted to uh, pass on the message, it's, it's a five year journey and uh, uh, there were lots of uh, challenges uh, during the five years journey. As Jeff was talking about, um, there were times where we have to pass the program, we have to change the schedules, we have to shift the uh, projects in the timeline uh, to meet the regulations, to meet the challenges of the plants uh, and the warehouse facilities. So it has been a big challenge for us and I think we have successfully overcome that. Thank you. <laughs>